Hello everyone, my name is Malik L. Train, host of Health Awareness Talk for www.sirbroadcast.com. I'm here today with three amazing people. Um, we have here uh, the Chief Kong Therapist, Yadi. Say hi, Yadi. Yeah, uh, we also have here Herbalist. Um, say hi, Michael. Hi, glad to be here. Uh, super. Okay, we also have a Hungar instructor. Uh, his name is Rick. Say hi, Rick. Hey, how's everybody doing? All right, super. Uh, for my uh, Qigong um, specialist, uh, Yadi, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. All How right. you doing? Terrific, thank you. All right, that's it for um, roll call. Now, everyone, for today, like I said at the very beginning, our thing is creating the ultimate athlete. All right, and this is from an Eastern perspective because we see how everybody's going about doing this from a Western perspective and from the Western race. And I pretty much do not agree with that because what happens is a lot of them, after they finish up their careers, whether it be for high school, college, or professionals, they get all banged up. They're not thinking straight. They got their joint problems and all that other type stuff that is going on with them. And also by watching them, you know, thinking that they're not living up to their full potential if they had the other side of the coin. Yang is all the exercises and everything that they're actually performing, but they're lacking what we call the yin or the recovery part of that. So if we look at uh, the yang or the exercises that they're doing for all the sports and all that other type of stuff, they know a lot. These professional trainers, I'm a trainer, knows a lot. Second thing you know that they, um, these football players, these athletes, they know uh, pr pretty much about a lot about what exercises to do. If you look at the nutrition part of that, they know just a little bit about how to eat in order for them to get healthy. They're killing themselves out in the field, but they're not eating right. Therefore, their body's not recovering the way that it's supposed to. But the third part we see about that is what recovery practices and this is one of the primary things that we're going to be focused on today is what type of recovery practices can you use in order to heal your body so that you can put a hundred percent out on the field court or whatever arenas out there okay now I'm going to talk with uh, I'm going to um, talk of each person right quick uh, we're going to start off with you Yadi because I know you personally and we're going to uh, take about three to four minutes Telling uh, what's your biography and your history, and a little bit about what's your perspective on that. Go ahead, Yadi. Sure. Uh, biography, a little background. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Um, I go by the designation of the Qigong Therapist. That's just a title I take based to, uh, to sort of explain what I do. I run a, pla a practice in Charlotte called Charlotte Reflexology. I teach Qigong twice a week on Friday and Sunday here in Charlotte in South Park. Um, I'm also a seven-year apprentice of a Chinese acupuncturist, but I've also studied a little bit of Japanese acupuncture and a little bit of Tibetan bomb form medicine. I've been a Qigong practitioner now for about 15 years. I've had a, a huge list of teachers, but I've chosen to, you know, to specialize in Qigong and studying the internal conditioning behind Kung Fu or behind uh, Chinese internal martial arts just because it's what saved my life years ago when I was in my early 20s and uh, Western medicine didn't work, herbal medicine didn't work, and the effects that I got from body work and acupuncture were not as lasting and concrete as doing the exercises called Qigong. Mm -hmm. So I hope it fits really well with the theme of recovery because uh, my recovery was basically 100% due to me practicing Qigong. Okay, and that's definitely, uh, yeah, that definitely is. A lot of people don't know is that the way our lymphatic system is responsible for uh, getting rid of all the garbage and all the toxins and stuff throughout our entire system. Now, by practicing Qigong, or another word they say is Qigong, I hope I said that right, Yadi, it actually enhances your body's ability to be able to get rid of the toxins and therefore it can increase your lactic acid threshold. A lot of people just don't know that and that's one of the reasons I look into that. And this is one of the also reasons why today we'll be talking with Yadi about what we can do in order to increase our lactic acid in order to accelerate our body's ability to be able to heal itself. And also one of my personal favorites, does uh, holding your essence within yourself makes you a better athlete. Okay, we're going to the next person. Um, uh, Rick, uh, master, 
the Hungar Master here in um, Hungar Kung Fu instructor, master, here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, yes, um, I met uh, my Sifu, uh, Jung Shu Poi, in uh, 1974 and started training with him in Hungar. And um, actually, I've been with him since then. Um, and and to, to speak on this uh, topic that we're speaking on, I think one of the biggest problems is um, not having a good inner core, a strong inner core. Mm -hmm. And the way we get that through our Kung Fu training is through stance training with the Qigong breathing. Mm -hmm. um, even the new students in Hungar in the first form are introduced to the beginning phase of uh, um, uh, Qigong breathing, um, which is very important to strengthen the internal organs. Because mm -hmm. as you were talking about, the internal organs are a very important part of our body. Mm -hmm. And a lot of athletes, football athletes, wrestling athletes, they uh, strengthen the external muscle, but they don't do any work to strengthen the inside core. And that's why so many injuries occur, and that's why their bodies take so long to heal, because they're not strong inside. And that's a, a very important part of our training. Mm -hmm. um, we don't do any kind of contact or anything like that until your body goes through this conditioning, this training to help strengthen the core. Mm -hmm. Okay, I definitely see that. Um, just like I chose Jadi to teach you the Qigong exercises that you need to do in order for you to accelerate your body's exercise, uh, uh, recovery ability, okay, um, to get rid of the toxins and stuff and specific parts of the body. I also uh, chose Rick in order for with his hungar styles because you're only as strong as what your tendons and ligaments are. Okay, those are things exactly. that connect everything together. I mean, as big as I am, as big as I am, as much muscle as I can, you can get a hungar student, or you can get a mechanic, you can get a farmer, uh, you can get people a brick person. They are very strong without having all the big muscles. It's because of the tendon and ligament development. And with the isometric training that's introduced in Kung Fu, in this special case is Hungar training, will actually would help you to develop a stronger tendon, ligament development, and also a core in order that to be able to help you in, uh, in every facet of athletic ability. And um, also they got this one uh, with the arm, is it the arm wire uh, training set that you yes. use with the arm? The arm exactly. wire. The arm wire. The iron wire set is one of the highest forms of Kung Fu that you can actually go through. Well, in the Hungar system anyway. That if you put the uh, these iron rings and things around your uh, wrist and things. And it will actually help to accelerate your growth for throwing basketball and all that other type stuff quite dramatically. So I like if any athlete or any coach out there would like to just go to a Hungar school and check out the unique exercises that they have in order to develop the tendon, the ligaments, and also core strength. I would say to do that because just for the fact is, is that we learn, we, a lot of us are specialized in learning what to do with muscles, learns what to do with functional strength, but little do we know about tendon, ligament, and strength, and also for internal development, uh, for internal organs and stuff. Next person, we go to Michael. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'd be glad to. So I guess we all have a martial art background of some sort, Qigong yes, or do. martial <laughs> arts. And I'm the same. I, I started in Tai Chi in the mid-1970s. And my instructor um, talked a lot about health and healing using herbs, things like that. And um, found out that he was an acupuncturist and got my first acupuncture treatment at that time, around 1975, early 1976. And I studied with him for, for quite a few years, four or five years, and then... Um, uh, moved to California and found out there was an acupuncture college and enrolled in it and um, graduated and um, got licensed as an acupuncturist in 1970, uh, 1984. And then about that time also I started an herb business called East Earth Trade Winds. Um, in acupuncture training we are trained also in Chinese herbal medicine so you have to know all of the basic herbs and the formulas, things like that. So I was able to integrate the things that I learned in um, Tai Chi or you know Kung Fu, things that I practice, along with the herbal medicine, and to me get the best, the best of both worlds and learn how to take care of my body and how to teach others how to take care of their bodies. 
So um, I've been doing this for quite a long time now, and um, I feel it's been an um, integral part of my health practice. I continue to practice Tai Chi daily, and uh, don't foresee stopping anytime soon. Okay, super. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Now we're going over to Michael. Uh, he studies. Uh, he studies with the herbology, and he studies with the Tai Chi. One of the most interesting things we learn as a child, and we begin to grow, especially we going through our growth spurts. What we find is that we still have a. Uh, we have a bit. We get clumsy. Things doesn't coordinate the way that they're supposed to. We learn how to lift weights and we learn how to do uh, different things, but still we got that clumsiness according to the growth uh, our growth rate or through that growth spurt. Now, um, I've been practicing martial arts now 20 plus years, learned various different styles. I'm also certified personal trainer, clinical hypnotherapist, uh, Reiki, just different stuff. But going with the Tai Chi. If you teach your child or teach the athletes Tai Chi while they're in uh, kindergarten and high school, when they're going through that growth spurt, they're actually learning how to align their spirit, mind, and body throughout that time so they won't be clumsy. Okay. Also with the weight training, what happens is, is that they begin to integrate that new muscle, give memory to that new muscle in order that it can, in order that it can integrate with the whole system. So they're maintaining that grace throughout the whole point throughout the uh throughout their whole point of development throughout life but especially during the athletic uh, uh athletic training so if you wanted to make a great if you wanted to turn a good basketball player into a great basketball player you do tai chi if you wanted to turn a great uh, f uh good football player into a great football player you learn tai chi if you want to turn a good basically turn a good athlete and to a super athlete, you will learn Tai Chi. All the great, mar most of the great martial artists out there, after they get a black belt or something, I've heard, quote, quote, they learn Tai Chi, which only enhanced what they've actually learned. And that will also, as an athlete, the Tai Chi will help to integrate skills and help you to learn other things as well. Also dealing with that is the herbology uh, that uh, Michael deals with. And uh, this one thing I look at is called three treasures. Your chi, which is your spirit. Your chi, which is your mind. And your jing, which is your body. There's certain herbs that you can eat along a regular basis that actually strengthen these three parts. Now, why is that so important? It's so important because kids and also people in college, people have the tendency to get distracted or get off their track or whatever. By continuously eating those herbs on a regular basis, we can keep the athletes focused on Enhanced athletic perform uh, enhanced athletic performance. So this is the one of the reasons I have Michael on the program today to talk about that in Tai Chi. Again, we're looking at Yadi for uh, sexual content cultivation and also accelerated recovery practices. We're looking at Rick in order for tendon ligament development and also developing the core strength. And we're looking at Michael in order to learn about the Tai Chi and different movements that you can do to integrate the body together as a whole and also about what herbs and foods that you can eat uh, to cultivate the spirit mind and body in order that you'll be balanced continually throughout life in order for you enhance your physical prowess uh, did that sound all good to y'all yeah very yeah, good. good okay all right now going back over to again to Yadi uh, and then we're going to go in this order. We're going to go to Yadi. We're going to go to Rick. We're going to go to Michael. Because these coaches want to know exactly what they can do in order to turn a good, af poor athlete into a good athlete, a good athlete into the amazing athlete. And like I said, everybody, all the coaches and everybody out there, all the athletes, they know a lot about the exercises. You may even know, they even know a lot about or some about the nutrition but the recovery part that um yadi that rick that michael's going to teach you today or talk about today those are the things you are lacking that if you add it to your program you would see dramatic results in the performance of whatever sport or whatever that you're um doing also bodybuilding also uh power lifting okay we start off with you yadi first We'll start off with uh, my que my question is storing uh, chi uh, is storing your essence sperm or whatever like that. Will that make you a stronger person? Yes or no? Um, I think the best answer is in Rocky, the first movie. He said, "Women, the the uh, coach Nick Rocky's coach said, women weaken legs.'" <laughs> <laughs> it, 
And bottom line, the uh, the essence energy is responsible for your lower body strength, which is responsible for returning the blood flow back to the heart from the low body. So uh, when you deal with essence in Chinese medicine, you're referring to yuan qi or original essence, which is basically your kidney jing, which affects your kidneys, adrenals, and reproductive organs, and conversely affects your brain, your serotonin and dopamine levels, and how you sleep and recover. So if you knew something about say, sexual qigong, as it's referred to, or qi sui jing, then you could, you could double your athletic performance if you really understood it. Right. Double um, the athletic performance. Why is that, Yadi? Well, there's, there's a theory. I'll just give you a real-life example without trying to sound like I'm in a classroom. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I, I'm a skinny guy, um, and I got very ill. I lived in an apartment complex that was black mold infested. Mm -hmm. Before then, I had been a boxer and a wrestler, kind of a young athletic guy, and my health deteriorated quickly. And I had, you know, fast heartbeat, tachycardia, went to the emergency room a few times. And, you know, doing herbs, doing um, a bunch of, doing yoga and things that are supposedly rehabilitative, it didn't make me stronger. Mm -hmm. But practicing the, the Qigong, especially the sexual Qigong, it really was able to ground this, what we call Qi, or this bioelectric energy, into my bone marrow. And the mm -hmm. bone marrow is what makes the blood. Mm -hmm. So by doing some of the stance work that Sifu, I'm sorry, I forget your name, mentioned, um, this is really how you strengthen the bone marrow, which is what makes the, the new blood. Mm -hmm. but, you know, if a person is out there and they're athletic, they're working, they're burning oxygen up, you know, they're going into a state of hypooxidosis. They're not restoring their body back to the condition it was in, but they are creating muscle tissue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If they knew uh, what I learned from dropping from 155 pounds down to 119 pounds, I looked like something out of a concentration camp <laughs> when I started to train. Mm -hmm. I've gained that weight back. My bones are thicker than they were. I'm still skinny, but... The athleticism really comes from having good, strong blood, good, strong bones, good, strong connective tissue. And you can do all the calisthenics and warm-ups you want, even the deep breathing. It, it has to accompany specific postures and specific movements and specific uh, visualizations that we create to create certain shapes in our movement. Those things, um, they really, you know, they really boost the blood oxygen level, the ATP level, and these things are measurable and quantifiable in the blood. You'll see them and feel them right away when you train internally. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's it. Um, from personal trans, uh, from my training, you know, for internal martial arts and also from personal training, from fitness and stuff, the storage of yeah, that uh, um, testosterone, you, there's, you don't get uh, anything for nothing. When you create sperm or when you create your essence, it comes from something, okay? Yeah. The body pulls from the ingredients or whatever that you got in yourself in order to create this most precious essence. And if you store it, what happens is is that it starts getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And you'll be able what I call what I call be cock strong. But also the testosterone, you wouldn't need uh, steroids. You wouldn't need uh, some type of testosterone booster or anything like that because your bodies already have that natural power within yourself. So this is one of the things that happens as you begin to uh, as you begin to uh, when you're young in your sports and stuff. You already have a natural increased level of in testosterone. But every time you get that get that out of your system, what happens is your essence out your system. What happens is is your body got to replace it. But we know, okay, we know that eighty to ninety percent of our athletes, eighty percent to ninety percent of most people, are not eating the way that they're supposed to they're not eating good food they're not eating live whole food so the body has to go through different port get different parts of the body to pull the things that it needs in order to recreate your essence therefore it makes you weaker it makes you weaker so if you buy hold i always notice that when i keep my mind focused on chased on being chased and Staying away from women, so uh, uh, stay away from sex altogether, so that I can uh, won't have weak knees or weak waist or whatever. My strength actually increased on that, and I found that was so utterly amazing. So a lot of these kids out there, 
who may be watching this program or listening to this program, uh, you know, they like, or oh, why should, uh, you know, why should uh, we shouldn't have sex before marriage, or why should we, or why should I uh, not do that, you know, uh, why should I keep myself chaste or whatever? I'm telling you, one of the secrets towards becoming strong, and anybody can debate me on this and talk, but from my own personal experience, I would say one of the secrets towards becoming strong is to keep a chaste mind, is to keep that essence within yourself in order that you can enhance your own physical prowess. Um, Rick, would you like to comment on that? Um, yes, I would. Um, as everybody knows, probably the most important thing for your body is your breath. Um, so it is very important to learn how to breathe properly. Um, and it's not something that can be done by listen to somebody talk about it or on a video, you actually need somebody to coach you through this um, um, way of breathing, um, you know, and then once you get it, you go out on your own and you begin to enhance it and practice it and become stronger. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> you were talking about, um, um, like if I play football, it's not going to help my golf game. If, uh, if, you know, I played basketball, um, most of that's not going to help my tennis game. But if you find a good martial art, which includes external and especially the internal breathing, and you practice that, that's going to enhance any sport that you play. And then the reason for our stances, like being explained, is stances help um, form the body in the proper posture so your chi or your energy can flow freely through your body and get through all the joints and get to the, the muscles at the furthest part from your heart as, as good as the muscles to the closest part of your heart. Mm. Um, but the most important thing is this breathing. And I tell my students all the time, when you practice the Qigong breathing, except especially the more advanced students, mm -hmm. I look at it as like a bank account. Every time you practice your Qigong breathing, this, this chi, this energy is being stored in your muscles. Mm -hmm. So when you need to use it and exert it, it's there. You don't have to do any kind of preparation. It's there. But just like a bank account, if you pull money out of your bank account and you want your bank account as fat as it was before you pulled the money out, you have to go back and put more money in. Mm -hmm. So this, this is a continuous process of, of daily um, qigong breathing exercise. And along with that is is uh, you know it's a type of meditation so mm -hmm. it helps calm the mind it helps teach the mind how to become um, very in tune with your body mm -hmm. um, a lot of times in my practice you have to be able to separate your muscles from your hand you know your forearm your biceps you have to be able to separate each of those muscles and mm -hmm. be able to control each mm -hmm. of those muscles and mm -hmm. that all comes from internal exercise mm -hmm. and that goes back to giving you a strong core it's just like any building you got skyscrapers if they don't have a good foundation they're going to fall over they mm -hmm. might look impressive for a while but they're going to fall over yeah, that's and so that's why it's so important uh the stance training the qigong training um you know to help strengthen that core that's true do you have anything to add rick on um uh, uh, about uh controlling one's essence and everything like that uh either for or against I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, uh, staying chaste. Does or does not, ah, staying okay. chaste increases one's strength. That's what I want to know. Am I just wasting my time with that? Yes, and, and the way that my Sifu would explain that to us, because we were all younger when we started our Kung Fu <laughs> training, was uh, they said too much push is not good, and he would point to the, to the Dan Tien. Uh -huh. um, where you store the energy. So he would tell us all the time when we were young, too much push is not good for you. So, you right. know, slow down, do more of your Kung Fu training, your breathing training. Right. And, and help keep the body strong. Yeah. Yes. Help keep the body strong. Keep that essence inside yourself to elevate your levels of testosterone so that when you're exercising, you're out and you're exercising and when you're committing yourself, you're actually able to go full power rather be uh, to be in a deficit of testosterone at that point where your body actually has to begin to manufacture the stuff that it needs or be able to get the stuff that it needs to manufacture more essence. And then at the same time, you're trying to push yourself. And, um, you know, that's how you can end up getting hurt. 
<laughs> because you're not as strong as what you um, you're not as strong as what you normally would be if your hormone levels were where it was supposed to be. Okay, Michael, could you add on that as far as uh, containing your uh, sexual essence, either for or against that, or um, yeah. any more information? Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to agree with you about that as far as your strength. I think that that's real important. But there's another aspect about that also is mm -hmm. that. In um, Buddhist and Taoist thoughts, is that by retaining your essence or retaining your your semen, mm -hmm. that you increase your spiritual powers. And you know, the Taoists are said to have um, the high level of Taoists are said to do you know very special things. Some some things that we think maybe it's a magical ability, like levitate or walk very fast or have some sort of psychic abilities. But also, when you when you retain that, you kind of um, open up a communication with a higher level, whether it's, you know, God or the Buddha or whoever you believe in or, or don't believe in, but, but you became more aware of your surroundings because you have um, a stronger being in general. So I think that as human beings that we have, um, the, or, the ordinary average person has certain um, abilities that we can do, but I think if you um, train yourself, and that's the purpose of Qigong or Kung Fu or Tai Chi or whatever, is to advance your body to um, to go to a higher level of being, to learn how to do things that ordinary people can't do. And I think that was one of my attractions to martial arts when I first saw that, is wanting to have a, um, a teacher who can show me how to do things that other people can't do. There's a, a book that I read a long time ago called Zen and Art of Archery. Mm -hmm. It's a very small book, and it was written in the 1950s, um, a, sort of a German man who went, lived in Japan for a while. But in the end of the story, it talks about him asking his teacher a um, question about, you know, will he ever, you know, be able to do certain things. And in the book, the teacher takes him to this hall, and they, they set up a target at the end of the hall, and then um, they get the bow at the other end, and then he turns off the light so you can't see the target, and the teacher draws an arrow pulls back and lets loose, and then he takes another arrow and shoots it into the darkness. And then they go up to the, the target, and um, they turn the lights on, and they examine the target, and the first arrow has hit smack in the center of the bullseye of the target. And the second arrow has split the shaft of the first arrow. So that's kind of a thing when you retain your essence. You develop, you meditate, you do qigong. You can develop your mind to be able to do certain things like that. Mm -hmm. Whether that has any practical use or not, I don't know. But but the point is, is that you can control your your mind, your body, to do such things. And to me, that's um, that's worthwhile to do rather than just um, laying around watching TV and um, <laughs> mm -hmm. not really producing much in life. So I think you know, going back to your original question, retaining the essence, I think it's good for developing strength and. Um, but also, like I said, higher spiritual powers, too, which can, can include being more compassionate to people and um, avoiding conflict with people also along with that. Yes. So what I'm basically saying is that by developing your essence, uh, holding your sperm, uh, you actually increase your level of physical prowess. You increase your level of strength. Uh, that's through, the store, that's through um, the accumulation of your essence. Okay. Most people who are poor or who are good athletes or whatever, I mean, if you go out there and if you just shoot your seed off or, you know, you go out there and be promiscuous on a continual basis, you're making yourself weaker. It's going to be hard, harder for you to become a great athlete if you're going out there just wasting your essence everywhere, especially if you're not eating good. It only makes you weaker and makes you more susceptible to injury and you don't have what it takes to put 110% into practice the way that you should. So that's the very first. If I was me looking back in time, talking to me when I'm first starting, I'd be telling you, keep your essence to yourself if you want to be great. Okay? Now, uh, another question that come around. Does women have, Yadi, does women have essences that they can control or whatever? Does a woman have essence? Yeah, tell me about how they. Of course. Yeah, well, of I'm course. listening. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they go about the doing it. They go about doing this the same way that a guy would. They just simply wouldn't have sex and store that energy, correct? Well, if I might say something here, go for it. Go I've for been it. practicing what people call sexual qigong mm -hmm. exclusively um, 
and you know this is this is something I studied with over nine teachers specifically mm-hmm. just sexual qigong. Mm-hmm. What I'm hearing a lot of is don't have sex, store your essence. Go ahead. If you don't, if if you don't have sex, and you're living sort of a monastic lifestyle, like I'm a monk, I don't have sex, and you believe that this is what's making you strong, mm-hmm. you don't really understand the concept of yang energy becoming yin or yin energy becoming yang. Mm-hmm. You don't really understand this transmutation of energy. Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. store and store and store, that is not a Taoist practice right it's written in the Tao Te Ching it says anything you hoard you will surely lose Mm -hmm. if you're not redirecting this essence that you're storing and storing and storing it's just going to turn into weakness right that energy will burn itself out you don't have to have sex to lose essence right in a woman's case she loses essence when she menstruates Mm -hmm. when she has her period she's bleeding she's losing essence and she doesn't get depleted from sex but she'll get depleted from her cycle. menstrual cycle. Mm-hmm. That is absolutely true. But see, the problem with that, Yadi, is how do you tell, I mean, you, you actually store it, but how do you tell these young kids that's in uh, high school, uh, that's in college, whatever, okay, you should have sex before your marriage? Uh, well, you know, this is a question of morals, Malik. Like, it, do I encourage kids to go out there and have sex? No. In fact, one of the biggest tenets of uh, Eastern philosophy is self-preservation. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to put myself in a position that might lead me on the hook for a massive financial responsibility in having a child, that's counterproductive if I'm trying to do um, sports, if I'm trying to be an athlete. I, I would have to go and get a job and pay for diapers, daycare, surgeries. You know, uh, that that's counterproductive just from a logical standpoint. Like, I'm going to have to pay for this kid. The mm-hmm. other part of it is, you can die from sex. You mm-hmm. can, just as simply as you enter, you know, the the relationship, the sexual relationship, that night could be your very death sentence. You can that's die. It. You can get a that disease. so it. And, and that's, I mean, this is why kids don't listen to their parents, because that's frightening. I don't want to be scared. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, well, I think what you're saying, or if I haven't underlined it, is not having sex with you know, with somebody just because you want to have sex and really appreciating all of the processes that go on in the body Mm -hmm. outside of just the fascination with having sex. Well, having sex feels good, but another tenet of old philosophy is if the person that you're having sex with is not in love with you. There you go. And you don't love her. She doesn't love Mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You're going to lose energy no matter how much recycling or, you know, uh, microcosmic orbits you're practicing mm-hmm. it has to be a heart connection between you and the other person otherwise it's a waste no matter how many techniques somebody taught you you're practicing sexual vampirism if you are not in love with that person you're just borrowing energy from her to make yourself so feel like a, a stud mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. okay i yeah. mean I, okay. go ahead if i might say one more thing mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. i have a young son who's about six years old we haven't obviously had to talk about, you know, having sex. Mm-hmm. He's not even in that stage of his life. But I have a lot of young students that are teenagers. And I'm sure, you know, my message to them is that don't have sex. My mm-hmm. message is respect the temple. Respect mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Understand that everything you do will result in something, a pattern in your life developing out of it. And the smallest little thing you do, if it's not conducive, if it doesn't help you on what path you're on, if it's, you're trying to be an athlete and you think, oh, it's no big deal, let me go ahead and, and do a little bit of uh, marijuana, let me smoke a little bit of joint, uh, let me go have sex here, let me go to this club, let me, if you don't think those things have major ripple effects in your body and your mind, once you start breaking down the temple, it could be the slightest little brick, the whole temple can implode on itself. Respect the temple. You know, that that's the key, just understanding that any little tiny indiscretion can lead you down a path of indiscretion. Right. Now, getting back on um, what we was talking about before about uh, containing one essence or not, um, I believe in the yin and yang. I believe you find somebody that you love and, you know, get married to them or you have a serious long-term relationship with them and things like that. But uh, what point, at what point do we store that we store the essence as a man? 
uh, at which point do we lose it in order for us to uh, excel, in order for us to become a better athlete? Uh, did you want me to answer that? Yes, I do want you to answer that, Yadi, because, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. I, okay, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a great relationship, um, and I, I, we have sex, you know, mm-hmm. and it's not pure, uh, like, when you get to the point of orgasm that you stop, if you learn male sexual qigong, you can recycle your sperm or your seminal fluid back we into the body. There we go. And you can actually have better sexual performance in that circumstance. Yeah, I, I, but to answer the question, every time you ejaculate at a certain age, it takes uh, a certain amount of days to recover. Mm-hmm. In your 20s, maybe it takes four or five days. In your 30s, maybe it takes two weeks. In your 40s, it might take a month. In your 50s, you know, you're, you're setting yourself back a lot. So if you can learn recycling, which is redirecting your actual physical sperm back into the body and absorbing the nutrients, absorbing the, the essence from it as food, you can make yourself stronger from having sex. But as an underline, you should be in a monogamous relationship that's a loving situation for you. It's, it's not like you're running around and picking up chicks and trying stuff. But yes, you can actually get stronger from sex. If you want to ejaculate, um, look at your age and look at how many days you have to recover from it. Uh, it's, there's nothing wrong with uh, having an orgasm. It's natural that men ejaculate when they have an, or- an orgasm, but, you know, to keep things honest and fair and not sound like a drill sergeant, mm-hmm. be conservative, be moderate. You know, uh, if you're in a great monogamous relationship like I am, mm-hmm. and you're with one woman like I am, there's nothing wrong with having sex. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with recycling, and there's nothing wrong with you sharing that part of yourself, and you can actually learn to make yourself stronger. And this is the problem, though, is that, uh, I mean, like, maybe less than 1% of the cycle, uh, 1% of the population actually knows how to recycle? Yep. Okay, that's less than 1%. So we got the rest of the, these young kids and stuff out here, they just ejaculate and making themselves weaker and everything. And not to mention... Don't you agree that the fo- you know that recycle uh, that uh, recovery thing because of the artificial food and everything that we eat on a regular basis, that the ability to be able to reproduce that essence, to be able to uh, to produce that testosterone, it actually it takes more time because of the health, uh, because of the foods and stuff we eat, Yadi. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The only cells that don't age in the body are the the sperm cells. Mm-hmm. Or those cells do not age. Every other cell does. Mm-hmm. Your hair, your skin, your organs, your tissues, they've scientifically proven that the sperm cells, even if you're 80 years old, you can father a kid. That's so absolutely true. But uh, when, you, go ahead. when you reabsorb it into the body, you're absorbing like the strongest anti-aging substance. And even if, you know, even if your mm-hmm. food isn't 100% up to par and all that kind of thing, this is something that they practiced in ancient China and mm-hmm. ancient Tibet, mm-hmm. you know, ancient Persia, and they found that even under those situations, learning to recycle can strengthen the body. Okay, so we're talking about uh, uh, recycling semen, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Rick, do you know how to recycle semen? Um, actually, the, the way it's being described, no, but um, um, through... Um, my conditioning of my body, um, um, I've learned how to keep my body strong. And one of the things that we were talking about is, um, um, like, when, when, when you love somebody, like was explained, that's, that isn't really having sex. I don't, I don't like to call that having sex. When mm-hmm. you love somebody, you're having an interaction, you're sharing your feelings as well as your physical body with each other. And, and like it was just said, the actual act of that can make you stronger mm-hmm. as opposed to just having sex. You're going to go out and you want that one pleasure, and there's no meaning behind it other than that few minutes of pleasure. Mm-hmm. And that, that is what depletes your energy. That is what depletes your essence. And, and my belief is um, that, you know, if you're in love with somebody and you share that intimacy together, that's, that's a sharing and when you share with people, uh, uh, both parties um, get something out of it. Both parties become stronger. Both parties become better. 
Um, and the mind, like I said earlier, breath is very important, but also the mind is very important. Uh, if your mind isn't um, um, calm and is in with the rest of the body, then there's chaos. And then, you know, with chaos comes the loss of energy, the loss of your essence without you even knowing because there's so much chaos going on. So your mind and your body have to be in tune. And the way to do that is to get back to what we were talking about, uh, the Kung Fu with the Qigong breathing, mm -hmm, the Tai Chi mm -hmm. with the Qigong breathing, or just a simple Qigong breathing with exercises um, um, is going to help keep that, that, that whole core and your body together as one and not separate these little parts of it. That's super, Michael. It would be like saying, if I'm outside and I want to train my body, I don't walk up and punch somebody in the face. That's, That's not going to train my body. Mm -hmm. um, I might get that person bringing in the school, have a relationship, and then again, we share. And then from that sharing, we both become stronger, and we both maintain our energy and our essence. So okay, all right, that's it. I totally agree with that. Michael, your um, take on that, please. Yeah, and as far as, um, I, I haven't learned, I've taken some Qigong classes, I haven't focused on that, mm -hmm. but um, from my background in Chinese medicine where they always talk about, um, you know, the health, um, things we should do for proper health, including diet or exercise, or in terms of um, sex, you should um, not go to sexual excess. Mm -hmm. And so even if you, um, if you have a lot of... Um, sexual desire you should still re restrain that because once again as we've been talking about this that um, it does build up your strength it's it's better not to deplete it um, in our earlier conversation prior to the show I, I mentioned that a lot of people who have generated or, or you maybe used up their their gene their essence are the ones who are um, the ones who are looking for the Cialis or Viagra now so um, so by being moderate <coughs> Excuse me. Being moderate in your use of um, not having sexual excess, retaining your um, your essence, that you should be able to have good sexual function into your 60s, 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. 90s. It shouldn't be a problem. But if you deplete it at a young age, like you were saying, these youngsters just think, yeah, we could go out and you know have sex every night and three times on weekends and so forth and so on. By the time you start hitting 40 or 50, these are the, the people who are looking for the Viagra because they've depleted their essence. So, um, you know, if you want to have, enjoy a good, healthy um, sexual relationship into your older years, as I believe most of us do, then you also need to um, be moderate in, um, in your sexual practice as you're, as you're a youngster or in your early 20s or 30s. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that as well. All right. Um, going back to you again, Yadi. Well, I personally believe as a person should hold that hold that personal essence within themselves in order for them to grow stronger uh, until they find somebody that they really fall in love with. Uh, looking for a long term commitment like the rest of your life. Uh, if you love somebody, it's like the rest of your life. It ain't just something that you just do for the present moment. And with that, also to learn, uh, what's the, that sexual Qigong is called? Um, say that again, Yadi. About re sexual Qigong is uh, often called uh, Shi Sui Jin. Okay, so if a person wants to, if a person wants to have sex and at the same time contain their essence to become a stronger athlete, become stronger in the gym or whatever, they would practice sexual Qigong in order to uh, reabsorb their essence into their body instead of shooting it out, right? Yeah, without a doubt. Okay. Um, you agree with that, Rick? Yes. Yes. And you, Michael? Yes, I agree. Okay, now since the only person here uh, actually has a course on that is uh, Yachty. Tell us a little bit more about your uh, male sexual Qigong program. Uh, I appreciate the mention. Actually, it's a, this is a brilliant topic and it's very cool to be on a media forum where we can actually talk about this because I've sold male sexual Qigong in 18 different countries around the world, uh, some countries I've never even heard of. Um, but male sexual Qigong was basically the, the meat and potatoes of what I had learned from eight different teachers. 
um, I had read books on the subject, and I had studied with a few people, but what I noticed was within every system, there was either um, something that didn't work, you know, or things that didn't add up, you know, ideas of you know, visualization and things that were, you know, non-physical things, like just imagining that something was happening that wasn't really happening. Uh, so I put the pieces together in my own practice for myself, and this was my uh, my Qigong routine. That was my sexual Qigong routine was the basis of what actually works, what physically conditions the internal musculature so that you can recycle, because there are muscles that are at work. There's a, there's a psoas muscle that's engaged. There's the Hui Yin acupuncture point of the perineum, which is a pump, um, but there's more to it than that. So my course teaches you how, one, to condition the entire body for recycling. Mm -hmm. So not only is it just, you know, uh, some courses are you do a little self-massage, you do some yogic breathing or something like that, and you imagine this energy flow. That's, that's great, but that's not what the program is. You have to have all of your, your 12 meridians have to be open. Mm -hmm. And my course explains how to open them, how to physically lengthen them, how to feel vibration through them. You have to have circulation to every cell in the body. My course shows you how to do that. Mm -hmm. You have to move the, the six harmonies, which are the joints. Mm -hmm. My course has that as well. And then there's a set that um, is basically firing up the kidney meridian, which is vital in sexual qigong because it's kidney jing. That you, we're talking about losing essence. That's kidney jing, um, and the, uh, the the last part of it is how to store it for like the uh, like the seafood said how to use it like a bank account. Mm -hmm. How to make a cumulative deposit without exhausting yourself, you know. And I feel like I look. I'm a I'm a consumer. I'm a student as well as a teacher. I'm a young guy. I'm almost forty. So mm -hmm. I've bought nearly every product on the subject. I've tried it for a minimum of 100, 100 days, because that's what they tell you, do it that's for it. three months. You know, and I have not seen anybody's program out there that actually works. Mm -hmm. There are programs where, you know, <laughs> you'll see guys swinging weights from their, uh, their package, which is insane. I actually had a teacher who swung his girlfriend from the roof of his house. I have a picture of that. If somebody contacts me and they want to figure it out, I'll send it to you. <laughs> um, but, you know, the idea is, it's not just the organ itself that's in, you know, you're not just using your penis and testicles here. You have to use mm -hmm. your whole body. Your meridians must be open, and you must be able to reproduce this energy in a clean way mm -hmm. and store it for your, mm -hmm. you know, your use. And my course is the only one that I've ever seen explain the actual how-to. The theory sounds great, and there's a lot of great, there are a lot of people that are more eloquent than I am. Mm -hmm. Writers mm -hmm. have written better books. They have a better command of the English language, but the how-to is what's missing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what you get. I have a video. It's a, an hour and 40 minutes long. There's a manual, which is less than 30 pages long. It's just the meat and potatoes. You want to know how to do it? Bang. This is how you do it. So a person, and you can start practicing right away. So a person will learn how to reabsorb one's essence instead of uh, pushing it outside their body in order to become a stronger athlete, correct? Yes. All right, that's um, predominantly what, uh, what I'm focused on. I'm not just focused on, uh, you know, just the Qi Kong and everything. I'm focused on how to become a stronger, more well-rounded athlete. How to go from being a poor athlete or a good athlete to becoming a great, an amazing athlete. Okay, also, um, Yadi, we're going to go back again. Uh, all y'all have studied Qi Kong, all right. So now we're going to be going over to uh, Qi Kong questions. We went over storing of one sexual essence in order to make you stronger. Uh, we also went to uh, if you would like to study sexual Qi Kong, if you would like to learn how to absorb your testosterone. Now we go over to uh, just the movements and everything of your body. Um, does or does not Qi Kong or your movements help to accelerate one's recovery practices? First, you Yadi. Absolutely, yes. There's, um, the, the best way to do it, Malik is a great person for this. Malik will, you know, if you know him, he'll do a push-up test on you. This is really how I test my Qigong. Like, I'll do a max set of however many push-ups I can do. For me, it's probably in the neighborhood of maybe 100 push-ups in a row, 
Which, mm-hmm. by the way, Malik is the guy who hooked me up with that idea. Like, mm-hmm. keep doing them. Get up to 100. Do 1,000 a day. Yeah, so I, I do the push-up yeah. test. So it, this is a good way you can test it. So you go through your max push-up or your max squats, whatever exercise you have an affinity for. Then you do a little bit of Qigong and go back to your set and see if you can't manifest that same number or a few more. Like, mm-hmm. it's that immediate. So if, if I can do it, if I can max out and then I can do my Qigong and I can continue to keep that level of performance, just imagine how quickly you can recover if you don't actually lose energy. Yeah, it is absolutely true. And I think that a lot of um, athletes out there will uh, appreciate learning how to use Qigong. Like, again, I said, when you work a lot, of, not only work on the meridians, but every time you move the body, you work on your lymphatic system. When you work on your lymphatic system, you actually helps that become uh, function better. Uh, through Qi Kong and things and that will help you from being getting over sore so you can get back into training again okay Rick um, how about we how about utilizing your style of Qi Kong in order to help to get over recovery faster because I don't know Hungar is especially good for that okay well to, to, to recover um, if you're talking about an injury um, and especially for martial artists it's, it's hard to recover the proper way because we always want to mm-hmm. keep keep moving, keep moving, but mm-hmm. um, uh, the Qigong glute breathing with the with slow movement, mm-hmm. um, you know, with slow movement to, to help stretch the joints out and mm-hmm. the tendons and the ligaments and, and do everything slow and easy to build up that strength a little bit at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, as an athlete, when you become injured, um, your only concern with that injury isn't really healing properly you're looking to that game next week or you're looking to that game in a couple of days and you just want to do whatever you can do to just make yourself feel better and get back in the game um and and that's where a lot of injuries happen somebody's already got a minor injury and they overlook it and they don't take the time to um, um, replenish that chi and get the muscle and the energy back into the body um, and again, it, it has to go back to the mind also with these exercises. But that's actually, um, um, that's actually, actually true. But one of the reasons I told you, um, Master Rick, is because you study in Hungar. Y'all do something like arm body training and stuff? Yes. Okay. Yes. You see, now yes. any athlete out there who's actually listened to it, if you prepare your body, if, if before you even do football on your out, off seasons, if you work on the exercises for arm body, you actually increase your body's ability to be able to uh, not be an injured. Am I right, Rick? Yes. And and one of the other um, um, remedies we use in in uh, my style of kung fu, and it's already been addressed, is is uh, herbal medication, mm-hmm. herbal remedies. We mm-hmm. use uh, the ditta jiao, mm-hmm. and the ditta jiao. Um, um, you know, a lot of American athletes get an injury, they have pain, they go to the ibuprofen or the Tylenol and they take that and it relieves the pain. It doesn't do anything to um, help heal the actual injury. Um, the Dit Jiao that we use um, is conjunction with our training to help strengthen the bone, to help strengthen the tendons and make them stronger so, you know, you have that strong internal core. So it's very important with any type of training you do um, that you take the herbs internally to help the, the, the internal of your body, and you also use, like, the liniments, like the dit da jiao and stuff to help mm-hmm. strengthen the bone and strengthen the ligaments at the mm-hmm. same time that you're doing your physical exercises mm-hmm. and your breathing and then also the mental, like mm-hmm. I explained. Everything has to be uh, functioning together. And um, when you exercise, you can't separate just the muscle training and the internal training. Yeah. Um, when we do it, it all has to be done together. And that's it. And I tell the people, it's the higher level your chi or your internal power, the less likely you are to be injured. Am I correct? Yes, definitely. And as far as I know, uh, I f- like let's say less than 1% of the population know exactly what exercises that you need to do in order to increase your internal energy within your body in order to resist injury. You know, so this is one of the things that I offer to any coaches, any athletes who's out there. Because that's the number one thing on your career is if you get hurt, you can't play. Or if you get hurt, you know, uh, people look at that. So how do you, from high school all the way to the time you get to pro, 
um, condition yourself or what type of program would you have to do in order to increase your chi in order to increase your life force to be able to resist injury so that you can have a very profitable uh, pro career and that's where Hungar come from that's where did Dao come from uh, one thing I was talking to Michael today about this guy doing uh, venal therapy he was actually sits himself in a, a tub on a regular basis every time after practice every time after a game he sits in red wine now, I don't think it's red wine here actually sitting in, everyone, if you've ever seen this, about this professional basketball player sitting in some wine. I think it's did Dow, or he put some herbal stuff in with that wine. It's like mostly water, and then he has some um, wine and stuff. Uh, Michael's going to be able to tell, maybe be able to tell us a little bit more about that. But uh, going back to you, Rick, um, have you ever heard of anyone uh, actually taking the bath in did Dow or any type of thing like that? Yes, definitely. That's... Uh, um, uh if if you can afford uh the the cow is rather expensive but if you can afford to to use that much um actually when we used <clears throat> excuse me we used our herbs um to make the ditta jow after we were done Sifu would say don't throw the herbs away we saved one or two batches of the herbs and if we knew somebody that was elderly that had arthritis mm -hmm. uh, it was recommended you take those herbs that we already used to make our ditta jow Put them in the tub, fill the tub with warm water, soak yourself in the tub. And then just that soaking alone will help get that into the bone, make the bone stronger. And like I said, if you had the arthritis, it would help with the pain and it would help um, um, with the muscle, I mean with the bone, and help replenish that and, and give relief to the arthritis. Okay. And in the old movies, um, to, to uh, develop um, your iron body, Mm -hmm. After you beat yourself and train your body, they would soak in, uh, you know, in a uh, vat of the dajau. And those herbs would just go into the body and help the bones. Mm hmm mm hmm And that's exactly... But for the structure of the body, everybody knows our structure is developed through our skeleton, mm -hmm. through the bones. So, mm -hmm. again, if you don't have a strong bone, weak bone, then you're not going to have a strong body. You have a strong... And that that's comes from our breathing, from the Qigong breathing. Mm-hmm. And that's absolutely true. I mean, we're going to come back on that breathing, definitely, part. So one of the secrets of Hungar, actually, is uh, with arm fist training, also with the arm body training. It's a special breathing exercises. And also, uh, it's real slow, uh, isotonic exercises, and also some isometric exercises to develop the tendons and ligaments like I said you're only as strong as your tendons and your ligaments and most of you athletes out there the only thing that you truly focus on is just building your muscles so through hungar you learn how to develop your tendons and also your ligaments also for recovery practice and also also with your recovery practice you have that dit dao which is the herbal remedies that helps to get rid to open up the circulation and the body and everything for you to get over your aches and pains and stuff like that in order for you to be able to have your af uh you'll be able to be on your career for a longer basis but also for you to be able to give 110 percent at practice that's very important for you to re uh, research that um michael can you um expound on that some more well, I would just want to go back to the thing about the venotherapy, the guy soaking in wine. So I looked okay. that up on the Internet, and um, apparently what he does is not only soak in wine, but then he goes into a, he soaks in a spa for mm -hmm. about 40 minutes, and then he gets a massage. So whether um, whether it's just the wine, I, you know, it's just part of the program, but basically mm -hmm. if you're going to soak in, in something warm, you're going to help circulate your, your muscles and relax mm -hmm. them and mm -hmm. things like that too. Plus the massage is going to help move any stagnant blood that you might have um, mm -hmm. built up or lactic acid in your system mm -hmm. um, from doing that. But as far as, yeah, using um, Dita Jalice is very important. Most of them are based on um, some core herbs, which are frankincense, myrrh, and dragon's blood. Mm -hmm. You'll find those as a hard ingredient of almost any formula. Um, pretty much everybody I've ever met will tell me that they've got this secret formula from their master that was passed down and some sort of um, story like that, but but when you get down to it, you've got the you look at all these different formulas. You always have the frankincense, myrrh, dragon's blood, and um, tian chi ginseng. And so the frankincense, myrrh, which were also gifts given to baby Jesus, mm -hmm. are known in Chinese medicine to circulate blood, and that's very important. Same with the dragon's blood. Dragon's blood is not 
from a dragon. It's actually a plant resin. It's called Sanguis draconis, mm -hmm. and that's the, the plant. It's not um, doesn't actually come from China either. It's imported um, from the Middle East. But those are the core ingredients. But when you are working out and you want to um, recuperate, whether you're doing like any like football, basketball, tennis, whatever, or martial arts or Iron Hand, you need to use the Dajiao's afterwards. Otherwise, whenever you damage the body, you know, the muscles or the bones, um, you, you have blood stagnation, like you get bruising. Mm -hmm. And the Dajiao's keep that from, um, keep that blood from stagnating. And essentially what you want to do, especially like with Iron Palm people, is that you want to be able to have a strong hand, but at the same time, when you're old, you still have the ability to use your fingers. You don't want to have this this claw that you can't move. Mm -hmm. You want to um, traditional uh, martial artists. A lot of the the um, the martial artists had other skills, like um, Chen Man Ching, who is also a great calligrapher and painter. Um, but he knew how to train. He knew how to use these things so that he could retain the use of his fingers and hands and and also, when you get old, you don't end up being crippled. You mm -hmm. end up um, retaining your flexibility because you have treated yourself properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like that's absolutely true, Michael. Do you, um, uh, so can you take a bath in something on a a, a light remedy type of dit dow or anything like that in order to help to accelerate one's recovery after practice? Yeah, I think you could. You know, you you can. I don't know. You do it full strength. That's a whole other story, but um, but definitely you could um, you could add some to a bath. It's gonna gonna help relax you a bit. Um, you can take other herbs. There, there's lots of different formulas where you can make basically you cook the herbs in a pot and then add it to the bath water. So it's kind of like in a dilute form. But mm -hmm. um, but certainly if you are um, you know if you were like um, in an intense competition or intense match or or in intense training, you know um, a lot of times. Um, your your energy is depleted from that, and so if you need to relax, that's a good way to do it. Just you add the herbs to the bath and then soak. And but the once again, the warm water is going to help relax your muscles and improve the blood circulation. The the last thing you want to do is to um, put ice on on yourself after you've had a, an intense workout because ice restricts the flow of blood, mm -hmm. and you'll end up with with chronic um, chronic problems, health mm -hmm. problems, mm -hmm. or injury mm -hmm. by using mm -hmm. ice. Mm -hmm. You always want to use heat. Okay, that's super. Now, everyone who's listening again, what we're focused on is creating the ultimate athlete through a Eastern perspective. Eastern perspective. Already, we talked about how cultivating or holding one essence or learning how to reabsorb it back into your body can actually make you a stronger athlete. Uh, next, we've actually went over how recovery practices of uh, you know the different qi kong that we can do in order to double, triple ones endurance in order by working on a lymphatic system that was from yadi from rick we also learned how to uh you know strengthening of the tendons and ligaments and stuff especially with the um the dip down also with the breathing um going back over to michael again he spent time doing the tai chi and tai chi like i said again if you're clumsy and stuff like that it helps to integrate your whole body as you're growing up from a child all the way to an adult so that you're not uh that, that you're not clumsy that you can learn skills at a faster rate uh through whole body awareness than if you didn't learn tai chi along am i right michael yes that's correct and you know earlier you said about how if you learn tai chi you can become a, a better any type of athlete and that's very true because tai chi is essentially learning the essence of movement you learn how to move from your center you learn how to um to move through your, your legs, your waist. Um, essentially, someone like who's a good boxer doesn't just use their arms. The, the punch comes, you know, channels from their legs through their waist to their arm, and that's where they get that immense power. But that's what Tai Chi teaches you, is that coordination um, through slow meditative movements. And then mm -hmm. into that also we have included the breathing, basically the Qigong kind of breathing. Mm -hmm. um, and then with, with good posture, brings about the good circulation of the, the vital energy, the chi in the body. And so we have a good flow of blood and um, good flow of chi in the body, which um, allows you to become more flexible. Um, as far as teaching children, it's, um, a lot of people use Tai Chi when they're older. It's kind of hard to teach children, but, mm -hmm. um, but it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. There's um, 
Yang Chen Fu's um, great grandson, who is named Yang Jun, he's like the um, the six in a line from from the beginning of um, Tai Chi. But um, he teaches over in the Seattle area, mm-hmm. and he started when he was about five years old, and now he's probably in a, you know about forty, forty five somewhere in there. So he's been doing it quite a while. But he comes from a family um, where you know you have to learn Tai Chi, so. Um, so there's a lot of structure that way. Mm-hmm. For um, American kids, it's a little bit harder to do that, to focus. Um, I think American parents in general are more lenient. Mm-hmm. When they're children, we let parents, American parents, we let our kids pick and choose what they want to do. Mm-hmm. In Chinese culture, the parents dictate, this is what you're going to do. And, um, and you do it because you respect your elders. That's super. Um, so um, so the, the best part about Tai Chi, if you can start early, you know, the earlier the better, but if you follow it through life, um, like I said, you can, you can allow what you've learned to help you focus on your other sports, your basketball, football, mm-hmm. whatever your other martial arts, too, because you learn how to relax. You learn how to, um, to not tighten up your muscles. Um, one of the keys to Tai Chi is that um, if someone pushes, you don't respond with strength. You respond by relaxing. So mm-hmm. the harder they push, the, the softer you get. Mm-hmm. So that their essence, if you can imagine, instead of pushing against a brick wall, you're pushing against a pillow, a soft pillow, where your hand just sinks in, and that's what you have no resistance to it. So you learn how to relax. And consequently, mm-hmm. um, if you can learn how to relax, um, that can have immense value. I was in China, um, I think it was like 2009, and um, with my daughter, and um, we were we were trying to go somewhere, and I, we got off the subway, and I was trying to get a taxi and had trouble finding one, and somebody pointed across the street, and um, I looked left and stepped out right into front of a, a motorized bike, mm-hmm. three-wheeled bike that was coming from the right, right against the curb, and I ended up kind of on his windshield, but I didn't get hurt. My body just totally relaxed at that instant. He, he mm-hmm. slammed on the brakes, my body totally relaxed, and um, I didn't get hurt. So I thought that was one instance of um, using Tai Chi where you, you just totally relax at that moment um, because it's trained in you to do that. So um, it's known through studies that Tai Chi can help with balance, it can help um, help people prevent falls as they get older. Um, a lot of the reasons that elderly people do that is because we don't have the energy to, to do the, um, the speed or the, you know, that we use when we're younger in, in different Kung Fu styles. Mm-hmm. So Tai Chi becomes more appropriate as we get older because it's more relaxing, helps with our balance, lowers blood pressure. There's been studies that show that, um, that it can help prevent the, um, the shingles virus from erupting on our body. You know, mm-hmm. there's lots, you'll see commercials on TV for that, but there's a link between people who practice Tai Chi and a lower incidence of having outbreaks of shingles because mm-hmm. they're more relaxed. They're not, they're not under stressful situations which might cause an outbreak of shingles. Yeah. So there's lots of benefits to do that. Um, but once again, if you, I mean, if you can get your kids to do it, find a teacher who's um, willing to teach them, and I'm sure there are, but, um, mm-hmm. but encourage them to do it and maybe even do it as a family make it a family practice and, and teach them that they've got everything to gain from doing that and, and whatever thing they do athletic or mm-hmm. piano playing music playing whatever because you're learning like i said the essence of movement yes you definitely are learning the essence of music you definitely are learning how to integrate your body as you begin to grow older instead of being clumsy you move a lot of grace my question to you, basically, um, Michael, is if a person was, to, if a kid was to learn from kindergarten all the way to college, Tai Chi, just to study it every day, what type of athlete would that produce? Oh, I think you'd have a very good athlete. Like I said, you would have someone who is, um, who is not only very flexible, but but knows how to conserve energy because they're not going to waste, they're not going to waste their energy through um, through movements that just don't work. You know, um, part of Tai Chi is one of the ideas is like, you know, your um, your waist is like the hub of a wheel and your arms are the spokes. And just like on a bicycle tire, that hub just goes around the circle and the spokes follow. So you learn how to move from your center. So whatever you're doing, whether you're throwing a football, a basketball, you know, um, hitting a tennis ball, golf club, baseball, whatever, you're using your center and, and generating more power by doing that. So 
if if a child starts at an early age and is able to um, integrate these ideas, and I'm sure they would after a while, it just become natural to them. But I think they would become um, an outstanding um, at their sport, and also I I would expect them quite possibly to have less injuries because they've learned how to treat their body appropriately. They learn how to relax instead of tense up. Yes, my whole thing with the Tai Chi is learning how to be a star athlete so that you can get a scholarship and go to college for free. You know, so that might yeah, be mo- yeah that might be a motivation for uh, a lot of kids and also parents out there. Yadi, can you expound on the Tai Chi and uh, children learning at a young age a little more, please? Yeah, hi. Yeah, I can I can try. Um, tai Chi is not really my art. I'm more of a bagua guy, but the uh, that, that's a whole other subject. Wow. Yeah. Uh, learning um, learning Tai Chi is an extreme amount of what I call internal awareness, and like there's so much with just even in the structure, the standing structure of Tai Chi. Um, you know, it, it's it's probably one of the best ways to develop this mind-body connection. My son, who is six, has been practicing his little form of bagua, uh, chung style bagua, mm-hmm. since just three, and he's walking circle. He's got two or three palm changes. You know, it, it's just a chance for you to be alone and be completely within, you know, absorbed within what's happening internally inside you, like. Where do you feel tension? Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a place in your body that doesn't move? It, what leg do you favor? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What happens to you when you stop breathing? What happens physiologically, mentally, and emotionally? I think, you know, doing an internal martial art, be it uh, one of the, the toilet foot, one of the uh, Shaolin arts, like Shin-Yi, Hongar, yeah. Hapgar, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love those arts, you know. Um, and even Tai Chi, Bagua, and Xing Yi, mm-hmm. what are mm-hmm. often referred to as internal arts, those things just really give you a chance um, because they're so inwardly directed, you know, with observing changes inside you. Mm-hmm. It really gives you that mind-body connection. Mm-hmm. Just, if you're out of alignment, you can't generate power. You can't receive force. Um, like the, uh, you know, the, the last brother was saying, you cannot receive someone's force if your structure is broken. Mm-hmm. You'll be trying to fight uh, strength with strength. And that's definitely not the idea behind Tai Chi. Um, mm-hmm. I've often heard people say, when they uh, put, you know, when they if they uh, fought a Tai Chi person, or if they ever sparred a Tai Chi person, that it was like fighting a shadow. Mm-hmm. You know, like whatever they did, the Tai Chi person just absorbed. Mm-hmm. You know, they had this absorbing, neutralizing energy. There we go. And when that Tai Chi person actually struck, you know, it was like being hit with the floor. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, just to add that in there, like, if you learn Tai Chi at a young age and you were able to use 100% of your body's power, you know, it's, of course, it's going to add to your athletic performance, but Mm -hmm. the biggest thing that I've noticed is you really learn what's happening inside you, you Mm -hmm. know, your temperature changes, your breathing speed and the depth of your breath, and, and you really get a chance to be in tune you know, more fully than you would if you were just jogging. That's tra- you know? absolutely true. That is absolutely true. So I know the three biggest ones is Tai Chi, Pakwa, and Xing Yi, right? Most common. I mean, there's also Liu Hei, Bafa, and Tong Bai, and, you know, we can't get by. There are five <laughs> Shaolin families, like the, uh, you know, yeah, the Tonggar being one of them. And, and that's one of my favorites, like the uh, the Chaogar and the Hapgar guys are Always tough, always solid, always sharp. Mm-hmm. I love those mm-hmm. arts. Mm-hmm. Now we're going back to Rick. Uh, let's go back to Yadi right quick. So you say if they learn a y- if they learn one of those five um, eternal martial arts, I'm all familiar with the Tai Chi, Shin Yini, and Bakwa, that we could create an amazing athlete um, from childhood all the way till it's time to go to the pros, right? Yadi? Sorry. I thought you were asking Rick. <laughs> no, Yadi, <laughs> Yadi. I think we could. Yeah. Well, definitely. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm tr- You see, the whole focus of creating an ultimate athlete through Eastern perspective is for coaches and for other parents and for people who are athletes out there. 
uh, to come to you all and to learn what you have to offer in order that they become from that they can just surpass their present parameters. Now, I know Rick, uh, you um, you went to Hopgar. Hopgar. Mm -hmm. I I know about Hopgar. Yeah, I have a very good friend, uh, C.P. David Chin, that teaches uh, the Hopgar. Is that such your school? Um, Oh, no. Uh-uh. He lives out in Fayetteville. Okay. Um, but, but one of the things that I would like to recommend, mm-hmm. um, if, if, if there's going to be young athletes listening, um, the Chinese, the Eastern philosophy, um, um, especially in the martial arts, is based on the yin-yang. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason for that. Um, um, and, and I know I'm not an expert on Tai Chi like Mike is, but mm-hmm. my understanding I mean, I know about a lot of the external arts. Mm-hmm. Hungar is known as external. Tai Chi is known as internal. Mm-hmm. But I think what a lot of people don't know is we start external, but then our, our mm-hmm. last form is the iron wire internal form. Mm-hmm. And I believe all the traditional Tai Chi forms, they start with the internal, but their more advanced forms are external, fast, and hard, like, mm-hmm. you know, like Hungar would be. Mm-hmm. Um, and that yin-yang is very important. To help keep that balance in your body, that, you can't just true. pump iron every day and build them muscles up till you can't even scratch your head because that's not good. You have to have some yin with with that yang. You have to, you know, balance everything. Um, and an athlete, no matter what athletics he's playing, wants to exert his energy mm-hmm. in the proper form. And through martial arts training, um, the energy, the power that you that you extend from your body comes from the ground. Mm-hmm. It comes from the ground where your feet are standing. Mm-hmm. So your feet have to have that root to the ground, comes up to the waist, then from the waist it transpires out the body. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of training is what you're going to get in, in, a, in a traditional Kung Fu style mm-hmm. or Tai Chi. Um, you get that, that, that training to teach you um, to bring that power from the ground through your feet, through your waist, and then exert it out the body. Yeah, and that um, could go. Yes, and that could go towards protecting your body. That can go towards uh, throwing a ball further. That could go towards even you running faster. You know exactly. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, there's a lot. You know, exactly. I mean, there's a lot to be offered from learning internal martial arts. Um, one other thing we need to cover. Then I'm going to ask you one final question. Uh, going back to Michael, uh, tell us about three um, uh, three treasure herbalism or herbalism in general. Well, you know, in Chinese medicine, there's um, what we have is what is called tonic herbalism, mm-hmm. which would be like the three treasures, and then the medicinal part. So the medicinal part is more like treating things with like um, like Westerners would use pharmaceuticals. Basically, you make a formula, you treat you know colds, flus, allergies, you know whatever. But um, but the three treasures herbalism is basically talking about um, prevention. Mm-hmm. And that's the key to um, Chinese medicine. Um, there was a book written around 200 BC called the Huang Di Mei Jing, which translates as the Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic. Mm-hmm. And that set the foundation of all the, um, the information of that time. It was all compiled at that time, all the medical knowledge. And one thing that came out then was that um, it said that um, treating somebody, giving someone medicine after they're sick is like, digging a well after they've become thirsty or going to war and then making your weapon. So the idea was that if you gave someone medicine, basically you're too late. So they were talking prevention around 200 B.C. Mm-hmm. And so that's where the three treasures comes in. Is that it's prevention. You need to take herbs to stay healthy so that you don't get sick. Or if you do get sick, you're probably not going to get as sick as other people because um, basically you're healthier. Mm-hmm. You've developed um, a strong immune system, for example. So there's a number of herbs, like in Chinese medicine, there's probably three or four hundred herbs that are used commonly, but mm-hmm. um, in the whole of Chinese medicine, there's probably you know four or five thousand herbs. But out of these, um, out of all the herbs, they divide them into twenty different groups based on their actions, and then one of those um, groups is the tonic herbs and that's where you have the three treasures you usually use the, the tonic herbs and those are broken into subgroups of of chi tonics blood tonics yin tonics and yang tonics mm-hmm. and uh-huh. while we don't have time to um to go into that in detail um suffice to say that one of the most important chi tonics is ginseng 
and which everybody's probably heard of. And then another one, which is blood tonic, which everybody has heard of, is um, Angelica sinensis or Dong Gui, or some people call it Tong Tong Kui or whatever. But um, but it's a blood tonic, and so um, these kind of herbs are commonly added to cooking. Um, you can take things like what's popular now is um, lisi berries or gochitsa, commonly known as goji berries. You can add those to soups or stews, things like that. You can take herbs like um, astragalus, which is good for the immune system. Mm-hmm. Once you can add them to soups or stews. There's lots of ways to take these herbs on a daily basis, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. with a sole purpose of staying healthy. And that's how you... You make sure that your chi and blood are um, strong, healthy, and take care of yourself. It's a, it's totally a preventative medicine kind of aspect to herbalism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's super. All right, we're going to go with, uh, um, again, like I said, we're going to have a couple more of these sessions, and then I'm going to have some coaches to get together and some people for y'all to talk to once we get this, um, once we get the telephone system and everything back up together. We're just um, getting on this topic of creating the ultimate, athlete through the eastern perspective now last question you is that i'm a professional coach it really doesn't matter um i'm in the nfl nba it doesn't matter okay i'm one of those coaches i'm one of the key people i'm one of those teams or whatever now i want you to think uh i want you to be thinking along this lines uh i'm a coach it could be from college could be it doesn't matter but if i was to work with you for one year okay uh, in your program, okay, whatever that you put together, what type of results would my players see if they were totally compliant to everything that um, you say that you say to do? Okay, and that's buying everything, that's doing all the exercises every day like I'm supposed to, and everything. What type of results would my team see in one year? Yadi, can we start with you? Probably the first result you'll see is just a higher morale, like a more positive attitude. Just a, you know, because health wise you'll feel better, uh, and your attitude will be improved because you won't have a whole bunch of aches and pains. Um, the biggest thing that you'll notice is you don't have a whole lot of lag time in between practice. You don't have a high, you know, where you get that runner's high. You're in adrenal fight or flight mode, and you go crash. You have a, a huge reserve of energy. You're able to play game after game, and you have less people on your injury reserve list. Uh, higher morale, you know, just uh, uh, and also when your team trains internally, they're really interacting on a different level. So they'll probably be more connected and have um, a better cohesion. You know, a better cooperative relationship between each other. Those would be the key benefits. Okay, uh, so, um, Rick. Well, if we start training um, in Hungar, what would we, we say? Well, yeah, um, um, I would say um, that that if you have an athlete that trains from a young age all the way up to college to the no, pro era, yes, um, um, simply put, <clears throat> what you're going to see is a better physical uh, player, um, um, more more strength, more stamina. Um, <clears throat> And, and, you know, quicker recovery time between practices and, and minor injuries. Um, and I can give an example. Years ago, I had a student that played football. And um, he was trying to decide, him and his dad were trying to decide if he was going to uh, forego the kung fu training during the summer, the off season, and send his son to a football camp and, and, you know, learn all that stuff that they learn at the football camps. And his dad decided to keep his son in my Kung Fu class. And so I trained him that summer. He, he played football. He played on the line. And I trained him um, with, with stance and with different uh, um, exercises we have to help with his explosive power on the line and his strength and his balance. And when it came time to go back to school and start playing football, his coach came up to him and was so impressed with the improvement from the year before, he asked Belton what football camp he went to mm. over the summer because he, he just, his improvement in his game, and he did not go to a football camp. He came to my school and trained. Wow. Um, so that's just an example right there that really um, just worked. Okay, that's super. Michael, your turn. 
Yeah, I think um, a lot of similarities between what the other fellows are saying, but basically I think that um, utilizing the things that, that I know about, you would see increased flexibility, less injuries, or when you have injuries, you'd have a, a quicker recuperation time and less serious injuries, and um, better reflexes overall. So um, all of these things would, would help the athlete's performance. Yeah, that's, yeah. Def- that's definitely it. Okay, for me as a personal training perspective, what I would see from each one of you, from Yachty, I would see uh, accelerative learning, uh, excuse me, not accelerative, but accelerative recovery from utilizing your Qigong forms and everything. Um, like I say, uh, your endurance and learning how to move in order to get rid of the toxins and everything in, in the body so that you can hit the practice a lot faster. Uh, and that's a skill as you learn that you get better at as you begin to master those Chi Kung forms. I think that to be invaluable um, for me, uh, for any athlete from a personal training perspective. Would you agree, Adi? Definitely. Okay. Going over to Master Rick. Uh, Master Rick, learning your Hungar skills. Uh, Hungar skills. Like I said at the very beginning, we're only as strong as our tendons and ligaments. And one of the things that professional athletes has been working on is their muscle development and not so much their tendon, ligament, and also internal development. Now, you got to understand, uh, developing your core and developing your internal power is two totally different things. And you focus on inter- developing the internal power. Am I correct, Master Rick? Correct, yes. That's, that's right. Okay, so that's one of the things if, uh, if um, the athletes were to go to you, they will learn how to strengthen the tendons and ligaments and uh, also internal arts. And also they, uh, if they go to Yachty um, Allman, they will learn how to accelerate uh, their recovery rate so that they'll be even more fresher to go to, uh, more fresher to, go to practice. Also, what you would learn with uh, Qi Kong or you said uh, medical Qi Kong for serious conditions is that sometimes we have a lot of ath- we have some athletes they catch different diseases and things in their body or imbalances within their bodies but learning medical Qi Kong they can actually help to prevent or possibly to stave that off am I right Yachty? Absolutely I had a, a young man about 24 years old who had prostate cancer mm-hmm. and that's far too young for somebody to have, you know, uh, and uh, prostate cancer is not something somebody in their mid to early 20s should even be looking at. But learning uh, Qigong for serious health conditions, which was the uh, Qigong routine I used personally to recover from being ill in my early 20s, um, his PSA, his prostate-specific antigen, went down from 138 down to about a 9, which is almost negligible just from doing Qigong. We didn't change his diet, um, hmm. but he was doing an hour a day of Qigong. So I always say don't underestimate the hmm. power of the natural healing ability that you can awaken by doing Qigong. And that's absolutely amazing, and that's totally correct. Now, going over to um, going over to Michael, now, the wonderful thing that I found out about you are for studying herbalism, um, like I say, and also for the Tai Chi. Tai Chi helps with total integration of the spirit, mind, and body. Also, as you begin to grow, you learn how to generate the maximum amount of force with the least amount of effort. But uh, going into herbalism, we learn how to pay. We learn how to put whole foods or natural foods into our body to develop spirit, mind, and body in order that we can master the skills um, that we're supposed that we have the mindset to master the skills that is needed um, as we begin to learn not only internal martial arts but any skill that I coach or anything that's needed to learn. Am I right Michael? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and that's very important. All these three aspects are very important in order to develop yourself as a great athlete. Okay, so these are a lot. These are the three topics, uh, um, things that a lot of athletes are not aware of. And um, so I want you, everyone, to out there who's listening to this, to really think about this and ask yourself how all of this knowledge that we just shared with you will go towards improving your abilities as an athlete in order that you can go to pro or order that you can be the best at whatever that you do. Now, we're going to go through each one of you again. I want you just simply to provide your name, 
uh, your, uh, your, the name of your company or uh, uh, where you teach and everything, and also your contact information. All right, starting with you, Yadi. Okay. My name is Yadi Alamin. My website is charlottereflexology.com. Also, thechigongtherapist.com. Uh, you can reach me by phone at 704-993-8321. I teach Chinese Qigong on Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. and on Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. If you're interested in body work or anything else, just give me a call, 704-993-8321. Super. Rick? Um, okay, my name is Rick Panico, and um, I run the Hungar Kung Fu Academy of Mooresville. It's on um, um, Route 21 in Mooresville, off exit 33 in 70, off of, uh, 77. Um, I have classes on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 6.30 to 8.30, and Saturdays, 11 to 1. Um, my website you can get to by uh, www.rickpanico.com. I uh, also have a uh, Hungar Kung Fu Academy uh, Facebook page with a lot of information on there. And if you want to reach me by phone, uh, my phone number is 704-663-6305. Okay. Michael? My name is Michael Chitowski. My herb business is called East Earth Trade Winds, and my website is eastearthtrade.com. We also have a, on Facebook, you can find us at East Earth Trade Winds, where we post articles and links on Chinese herbal medicine and other related topics. And then for acupuncture, my business is called Redding Acupuncture Healthcare. We're in Redding, California, which is in Northern California. And the website there is acupuncture, A-C-U-P, healthcare.net. That's A-C-U-P, healthcare.net. And um, that gives information on acupuncture and treatment by that. But anybody interested in herbs, go to eastearthtrade.com. We have our phone numbers posted there and other links. Okay. Uh, again, I thank all of y'all for being here on the show, Health Awareness Talk for www.sirbroadcast.com. Yadi, you have anything you'd like to add, Yadi? I just want to thank you, Malik, for putting this little show together and, you know, giving people an opportunity maybe to hear something that is a little bit out of the mainstream and, you know, kind of pigeonholed and, and really... Uh, the, the thing that my Sifu used to ask was, what is the most important exercise you do? Mm -hmm. And everybody would go around the room and people would say, breathing, standing, uh, movement, stretching. And, and he's always known for, for answering that question as, the most important exercise is the one you actually do. <laughs> so train well, be well, and stay well. Thank you. Super. Thank you, Yadi. Rick? Uh, yeah, I just want to thank you, Malik, for putting this together, um, um, and I feel honored that you included me in this, and I also uh, appreciate listening to uh, Yanni's expertise and Mike's expertise mm -hmm. and, and uh, giving me a little bit more enlightenment on um, um, what I practice and what I teach, and so just want to tell you thank you very much for this opportunity. Super. Thank you, Rick. Michael? Yeah, it was, a, it was a pleasure to be here, especially with such knowledgeable other gentlemen and yourself, too. So um, I hope this continues because it was a really good discussion. I think I learned a lot, too, um, listening to everybody. So um, very good program. I appreciate it. Super, and you welcome Super. And you welcome, everyone. You welcome, everyone. Uh, again, uh, we're going to have two, well, we're going to have three other shows on this topic. Again, it's creating the ultimate athlete from an Eastern perspective. So we probably have, uh, besides um, Yadi, Rick, and Michael, we probably have two other practitioners um, on together as a group for uh, your coaches, athletes, and parents to be able to take advantage of this knowledge in order to uh, create the best ultimate um, athlete that we possibly can, or even fitness enthusiasts. Again, 
the number one thing that people specialize on from a Western perspective is just the exercise. That's it, okay? That's like, uh, you know, that's only like using one third of your potential. The second is uh, nutrition. And most athletes out there, like 80%, if I ask them how to eat or what type of herbs and stuff they need to take, they don't have a clue. So you want to add that too. Also, you as a parent, you know exactly how to feed your kids in order to get the most performance out of them in order that they can get these college scholarships and stuff in order that they can go to the pros if that's what they choose to do but you learn how to make the uh you learn how to help them to live up to their full potential and again it it may be 80 percent you know don't know about it but almost 90 percent or 99 percent do not know what type of accelerated recovery practices out there that they, that you as an athlete can use, or you as a parent can share with your kids, in order for them to get over being sore, in order for them to develop at a faster rate than usual. And this is what the Eastern perspective is all about. Also, that um, if you are also in a career, uh, a career, how to, if you're already hurt and everything like that, how to utilize these skills, and over from, um, in order to get over being hurt as well. Uh, also, with y- y- uh, Yadi next show, we'll be also be talking about how to use Lies Chi Kong in order to help with you take if you ever took steroids, if you ever took pro hormones, if you ever took creatine or anything like that. How to use Chi Kong in order to get into, um, how to get over to that. Master Rick will be going over again what type of uh, his uh, arm wire training and stuff. Uh, the ones where you put the weights on your wrist and things, and it developed amazing strength <laughs> using the weights on your wrist going through these slow cheek kung forms. Hopefully, by that time, we'll be able to have uh, the Skype up so you can actually see him demonstrate some of the stuff or some of these people demonstrate some things uh, quickly. And also with my, uh, also with Michael, you learn more about what herbs not only, not only to uh, sustain a, a amazing sense of inner peace all the time but also to uh, increase your sense of mental alertness or mental clarity so that you can do better in school so that you can stay um, playing sports or whatever that you make because there's certain herbs that you can eat that'll make you smarter and ginseng of course you know it help you give you more energy okay so I want all y'all to be open and be looking towards that next show with that again my name is Malik L train certified fitness professional uh, clinical hypnotherapist Reiki master this is health awareness talk for www.surfbroadcast.com all of you have a wonderful night and looking forward to our next episode